Egotastic fun time, car time, time. Hey gang, I'm JP and welcome back to Talking the Orville on Egotastic Fun Time, car time edition. Today, we're going to have a great time talking about last night's all new episode of the Orville Sanctuary, directed by Jonathan Frakes, with special guest star Marina Sirtis. Tony Todd, F. Murray Abraham. Every new episode of the Orville is my favorite episode of the Orville. That's probably never going to change. And wow, this episode, it's a follow-up that we've, we've been wanting since last season uh, with episode three uh, about a girl, you know, where uh, Bordis and Clyden have their child turns out to be a girl and they have this big old to-do, uh, this uh, hearing on, you know, whether it's going to get a forced uh, re- a sex reassignment surgery. Because Mocklins, they like boy Mocklins. They don't like girl Mocklins. Girls go to Jupiter to get more stupider. And boys go to Mars to get more candy bars. I absolutely adore this episode. The whole uh, bringing this back now. A lot of people are saying, oh, they've done a lot of Mocklin stuff this season. Now, yes, they have done a lot of Mocklin stories. It's usually... Uh, you know, a Bordis or Clyden type of deal. But this is actually the world of Mocklis that we're dealing with. Their government, their their representatives. Uh, because it turns out that there are people, there's a network, almost like a an underground railroad, but really it's a outer space railroad uh, for, you know, different Mocklins to escape the oppression of, of their world, mostly females. I'm assuming there should be some straight Mocklins uh, looking for the sanctuary as well. But of course, you can't uh, pretend to not be female, but you could pretend to be uh, not straight, I guess. So uh, there's actually a, si- a network of Mocklins that are helping females escape. So there's two Mocklins that uh, come aboard the ship, you know, under some guise of, oh, we're doing some sciencey stuff. Uh, because this is space and we like to do science. And it turns out in their briefcase, they actually have a female uh, Mocklin baby and they're trying to get it to the sanctuary. Throughout the season, Bordas has kind of been on, on, not on the fence, but he's been caught between two worlds. We've talked about that before, between uh, the ways of his people and then everything he's learned with his experiences uh, with the Union, being part of the Union. Clyden, it's tough because I love Clyden so much. Uh, Chad Coleman, he just has this little sparkle in his eyes. He's one of the only Mocklins that smiles and has this really great demeanor. But turns out, just like most Mocklins, he's just a a, a, <laughs> a horrible person inside, really. Uh, though he doesn't know, that's just the way he was raised, right? So I understand it. Uh, which is, it's a nice dynamic. And I wonder if they thought of it, about that ahead of time. They thought, Seth was like, okay, we have Clyden, who's a Mocklin. Mocklins are very serious. But I wouldn't say that Clyden is very serious. He's very joyful. He's very, uh, you know, happy, smiling, unless he's just putting on a good face. Because Bordis was saying, uh, Clyden, uh, you didn't even address Kelly. You never leave our quarters because you're disgusted by the women. So maybe his little joyful act is just that, an act. Uh, He's putting on a good face. In this episode, Bordas actually had to make a decision. He had to stand his ground. Just like uh, Isaac had to do that uh, when it came to his people, the Kalon. He had to make a choice. Bordas decided to go against everything he's been taught, everything he knows, how Clyden feels about the situation, uh, his whole people feels about the situation, and he decided not to tell anyone about that female Mocklin child because he wanted the child to find sanctuary as well. So it was really nice to see Bordas take that stand, do the right thing, I think Dolly Parton would have been very proud of Bordas in this episode. But it puts the Union in this big predicament once everything is discovered. After after everything came out, now Mocklis is up in arms. Uh, They practically want to go to war. They want to go down to that sanctuary planet and imprison all the fugitives. Uh, basically just female Mocklins. How dare you be born female? Your plumbing downstairs is an affront to Mocklin wieners everywhere. Now we've been talking for months. Months and months and months. As soon as I found out, I told you guys about it, that Marina Sirtis was going to be guest starring in the episode directed by Jonathan Franks. And now that 
episode is here, but we had no idea what she was going to play, what she was going to do. I didn't know if she was going to, you know, be working down at the sanctuary, which of course now makes sense that she wouldn't be because it's, it's pretty flush with Mocklin's in charge down there. Havina's in charge. Marina Sirtis has taken Cassius's place as the school teacher aboard the Orville. It was really nice to see Marina on the ship in that role, but the role wasn't, you know, wasn't juicy. Didn't have a lot for her to do. Um, it was just really great to see her. But if you think about it, you guys, now every episode of the Orville from now on, going forward, she's the school teacher on the ship. That means that next week, even if we don't see her, Marina Sirtis is aboard the Orville. That school teacher is there. So we could run into Marina anytime we want to. She's not she wasn't just, you know, happening by. She wasn't just visiting. She wasn't playing a museum curator that they're just giving a lift to. She works on the Orville, so she could show up anytime. So I wonder if Jonathan Frakes, who of course is the one that suggested Marina for this role. Seth had a different role uh, in mind for Marina Sirtis at some point this season. I don't know what role that was, but Jonathan says, hey, this is the role. Now, I wonder if Jonathan's like, okay, if she's the school teacher aboard the ship, that means that she can get more work in the future. She could keep showing up. I fully expect the Orville's resynthesizers to be making a lot more chocolate cake and chocolate ice cream in the future. It was really nice to get caught up with the character of Havina. Now, I've said many times during the live shows and during our discussions that I guarantee you, when she revealed herself to be a female Mocklin last season, and you know, had that great speech and all that great stuff. She didn't change any minds, maybe Bordas's mind, but she didn't change any of the Mocklin's minds really. And I said, I guarantee you, she's probably was put in prison right after that hearing was done. She was discovered, they put her, they're not gonna say, oh, go yeah, go back and live in your cave. No, they're gonna try to, uh, they're gonna try to uh, arrest her, right? So I don't know if she had to flee and escape through the network at that point or what, but, we find out she's not in prison. She's at the sanctuary. She's the head of the sanctuary. We also find out she's a big fan of Dolly Parton, but who isn't? Avina, 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 Avina. I'm begging of you, please don't steal my Mocklin. The effects, the amount of cast and extras was huge. They had a lot of alien delegates in this episode. I guarantee you they worked a lot longer than nine to five to get this episode put together. Speaking of all the alien delegates, that whole scene where they're, you know, trying to figure out what to do. They have Tony Todd as the Mocklin who's like, oh, stupid women. F. Murray Abraham, I guess he's the head of, I mean, I guess he's the speaker, the moderator, whatever, of the union, at least with this meeting. And it was nice to see F. Murray Abraham, who's playing a Salayan, by the way. Uh, it's nice to see him play a good guy. He doesn't get to play a good guy very often uh, in sci-fi. So he got to play a good guy, which was great. You see all the aliens. They had uh, Olix's people. You know, Olix, the bartender played by Jason Alexander. His people were there. Uh, those Hellraiser aliens. Uh, you know what you're talking about. The white guys with all the, the crap coming out of their faces. That's the same race as that dude at the Calavon Zoo in episode two last season, Command Performance. The guy's like, hey, welcome, you're in the Calavon Zoo, dude. What other races do we have? I think we saw Dan's, Lieutenant Dan's people there. Uh, the Salayans were there, the Mocklins were there. We had the human representatives. Oh, there was a little bit of jelly in the crowd too. If you look, there's uh, two representatives of Yafit's people. So there was some jelly and a bunch more. Of course, when I do the full review, I'll be going through and seeing what I recognize because there was a lot of aliens there. A lot of makeup was being done. Howard Berger, mm, good job. I loved how back on the ship, on the Orville, things were pretty dang serious. They, they had to contend with, they had to stave off the Mocklins from uh, attacking the sanctuary planet. Kelly was ready to throw down in this episode. You guys, she's she's like, fire on those stupid Mocklin fools. And Gordon's like, oh, but that's an act of war. She's like, F it. Shoot them in their stupid Mocklin faces. Blow their wieners off. See how they like not having wieners. Throw out some torpedoes and whatnot. I'm gonna have to go back and watch the episode on a different screen. I was watching it on my computer screen, which I always watch uh, the Orville on my computer because I got to take notes and stuff like that. But I noticed that it had a different look to it. And I don't know if this was uh, Frakes' influence 
or if they just made some changes. I'm gonna have to go watch it on a different screen to see if this holds up to be true. But the episode had a, a lot more of a cinematic look to it. It almost looked like movie quality filters or lenses or something. I don't know what the difference was. I noticed Gordon's hair was a little different. Looking pretty fly for a white guy, Scotty Grimes. But Seth MacFarlane said this episode is a game changer and it really was because we don't know how this is going to affect our relationships uh, with the Mocklins in the future. Now, every Mocklin episode always brings up the, the question of how long are we going to put up with this? And this is kind of the culmination of all of that. Everything that we've seen from the Mocklins finally came to a head here, and the union finally had to make a decision. Though it was a little bit of a cop-out, uh, not really, because it is a very complicated situation, but Admiral Halsey says, okay, we won't recognize the sanctuary as a, its own sovereign nation as long as they shut down the Outer Space Railroad. Um, are you guys cool with that? And you'll leave the sanctuary alone, stupid Mocklins. And Mocklins is like, okay, we'll leave them alone. Captain Mercer also brought up the point that if we don't work together against the Kalon, uh, Mockless will be wiped out along with the rest of them. And that sanctuary planet is pretty hard to find. So there's a good chance the Kalon won't wipe that planet out. Therefore, the only Mocklins left in the universe will all be female. Still a single gender uh, society, but the wrong gender, according to uh, scripture of the Mocklin gods. Whoa, there goes the fire truck, fire truck. So we didn't really have a super big win. Havino was the first to say that. Um, they didn't win, but they also didn't lose. There's going to be many more on actual uh, the Mockless homeworld who are going to be oppressed uh, one way or another. And that's kind of sad, but at least they're gonna leave the sanctuary alone. And I guarantee you that Outer Space Railroad will probably be opened up again because you can't stop people from trying to be free. Come on now. Now I gotta go get to work. I gotta start gathering information about this episode, writing down my thoughts, putting together uh, the recap portion of the big review. Of course, this is just my first impressions uh, video, but we'll be putting together the big review of Sanctuary really soon because I want Dolly to be proud of me. Okay, that's it. That's all I wanted to talk about today, and I talked about it. I'm also sweating my balls off in this car. How about you? What did you think of Sanctuary? The Orville, Season 2, Episode 12, directed by Jonathan Frakes, guest starring Marina Sirtis. Are you excited for the possibility of seeing Marina Sirtis again on the ship? Because she's there. She works there. She's the school teacher, you guys. How did you feel about that big Mocklin battle uh, with 9 to 5 playing in the background? I loved it. Some of you were like, what? Um, I thought it was the best thing ever. But hey, both of our opinions are correct, right? Because it's our opinions. I want to know what you thought about this episode, and you can let me know what you think by joining the conversation below. Thank you so much for liking, sharing, and supporting my stupid show. It really does mean the world to me, you guys. I'll see you very soon. And as always, I hope all your times are egotastic Fun times. Love you. Bye bye. Eagle Eagle fun time. Fun time. We're gonna have a great time. Eagle 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 fun time. Give me all your money. Give him all your money. You will find me funny. Just give, give me money. money. I love money. Give him all your money. Give him all your money. Give him all your money.